Before we begin with this video, a quick word from our sponsor, Opera GX, the browser for gamers. Let's be real, standard internet browsers are pretty boring. And since you're probably into Counter-Strike, you want to keep things exciting, even outside of games. Luckily, Opera GX can help you with that, since it offers endless customization options, like wallpapers, background music, keyboard sounds, and even shader effects for all websites. Opera already comes with its own built-in themes, which are a nice blend of neon colors and dark backdrops. You can also customize them and even upload your own images. But if that's still not enough, you can even enable free animated wallpapers. And I assume you're a fan of games, which is why the GX Corner is perfect for you. It helps you stay up to date with free games, the best deals and other gaming news. There's even a release calendar for upcoming games. And if you're as lazy as I am, you'll be happy to hear that Opera's quick import tool lets you import everything from your old browser, like settings, bookmarks, cookies and more. So if this sounds like something for you, then click my personal link below and download Opera GX today. And now, on to some German Counter-Strike. Okay, dann mal los. Ah, verstanden. Alles in Ordnung hier. Alles ruhig. Alles klar. Alles klar. So wird's gemacht. Alles klar. Komm raus und stell dich. Komm raus. Wir sind hier nicht im Kindergarten. Na, komm schon. Warte. Ich hab was gehört. Gute Arbeit, Jungs. Gut gemacht. Das haben sie sehr gut gemacht. Das haben sie gut gemacht. Gut gemacht. Er hat die Bombe. Er hat die Bombe. Er hat die Ladung. Hey! Hey! Ich habe etwas gehört. Ich höre sie. Ich habe da drüben etwas gehört. Ich habe sie gehört. Darüber habe ich mir keine oh, Gedanken gelegt. gemacht. Oh nein. Oh nein. Entschärfen Sie bitte die Bombe. Hat die Bombe verloren. Die Bombe liegt bei A. Die Bombe tickt bei A. Da ist die Bombe. Da ist die Bombe. Da ist der Bombenleger. Es sind zu viele von Ihnen. Ich könnte etwas Unterstützung gebrauchen. Schöner Schuss. Alles Anfänger. Na, das war schon nah dran. Oh, das war knapp. Sonst noch jemand? Ja, super. Ja, yeah, jawohl. Entschärfe. Entschärfe die Bombe. Entschärfe jetzt die Bombe. Zielgebiet sicher. Zielgebiet gesichert. Sie können die Bombe entschärfen. Zielgebiet gesichert. Zielgebiet unter Kontrolle. Wo ist die Bombe? 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 Oh oh. Sie sollten sich vielleicht mal um die Bombe kümmern. Die Zeit wird knapp. Es bleibt nicht mehr viel Zeit. Das sieht nicht gut aus. Oh mein Gott. Nichts los hier. Welcome to the quirks of German Counter Strike. All of them. In this series of mine, I compare the German versions of games to the English originals, analyze the differences like censorship and voice acting, and then decide if those make these ports better, just as good, or even worse. Previously, I finished up almost all Valve titles except for Left 4 Dead and Counter-Strike, so I'm doing that now. You could give them a watch too to get a better idea of how these types of videos are structured. It's not necessary though. But do subscribe if you enjoy this format because there's certainly more where that's coming from. And maybe even leave a like and a comment or support me directly on Patreon to make more videos like these possible. Especially if you like seeing them one week earlier than everybody else. Now however, we are going to be taking a look at the German Counter-Strike games. And what a series to analyze, considering there's around 4 to 6 entries, depending on how you look at it. And each of them come with their own unique differences. Enough with that though, let's start with the first one in the series. There's no German version of this one. A simple game from a simpler time, and as a result, a good place to begin. Let's first compare the voice acting, since there's not all that much to talk about there. Both the player characters and the hostages were dubbed, but death screens and so on remained unchanged. The original English lines were incredibly amateurish, probably because the developers recorded them themselves. At times, they really sound like they were made by a teenager at 3 in the morning who is trying his darndest to not be too loud and wake his parents. Team, fall back! I'm hit! Need assistance! Go, go, go! The actual quality of the audio is also all over the place, with constant mic popping and peaking, as well as the radio filter kind of doing its own thing depending on how it feels. You take the point. Get in position and wait for my go. Report in, team. Cover me. Alright, let's move out. And some lines are just out of place entirely. Flank them. In comparison, the German dub sounds a lot more competent, probably because they got actual voice actors for it. The voices are nice and the audio quality is pretty consistent. Here, give it a listen. Reporting in. Erstatte Bericht. Enemy down. Feind ausgeschaltet. Okay, let's go. Okay, dann mal los. Alright, let's move out. Okay, los geht's. The hostage has been rescued. Die Geisel wurde gerettet. Bomb has been defused. Bombe wurde entschärft. Storm the front. Vorderseite stürmen. Protect the VIP team. Den VIP 
schützen, Team. Get out of there, it's gonna blow. Los, raus da gleich rum, Stas. However, even they have problems, like awkward pauses. In Position gehen und auf mein Los warten. And because everyone sounds just so professional, the lines fit the experienced CTs more than the untrained Ts. Whereas the English ones, as poor as they may be, work well for both sides. I suppose at the time, the German dub was superior, but the original voices live on, simply because their cheesiness makes them so iconic. Goes to show that a unique performance is sometimes better than a flawless performance. On to the censorship. There were two versions of 1.6 that got affected in different ways. The Steam version for ages 18 and older, and the physical Ultimate Edition rated 16 and up. And since I'm not going to buy a CD for a 10 second clip, I use Schnittberichtes images instead. The Xbox version remained uncensored by the way. In the Steam release, all blood was turned off completely, like in Half-Life. This makes it a tad harder to spot if you're actually dealing any damaged enemies. Blood splatters on walls are also turned yellow. So if someone you just killed asks you, are you taking the p*** out of me? You can just say, yes. Yes I am. In the physical release, these changes remained the same, but defeated enemies now also sit on the floor and shake their head, again much like in Half-Life. Custom death animations were obviously also taken out. For some reason, there's also only one type of hostages, namely the orange jumpsuit one. I have no idea why this is. Maybe they wanted to signify that these are prison inmates, and therefore it's not as bad to capture or kill them compared to regular civilians. If that's true, that's a big yikes. Also, these ones don't die either, they simply surrender by putting their hands behind their backs and getting on the floor. Overall, these aren't bad ports whatsoever, with the voice acting being a clear winner. I'm honestly surprised the game was even available at all over here, for reasons I'll get into at the end of the video. I'm also happy they tried to keep the gameplay as intact as possible, since that's the most important part. So while it is more difficult to know when you've hit enemies, at least the peas, blats and walls let you know that someone did their business in that area before. And honestly, the censorship could have been much worse. They didn't cut any maps, game modes or weapons, and no characters were changed, aside from the hostages. I mean, can you imagine if they went the Half-Life 1 route and turned every playable character into robots? <laughs> That'd have been so stupid, because that's what they did for Team Fortress Classic. Yeah, let's take a look at that, because why not? In TFC, every single character uses the exact same robot model ripped straight from Half-Life 1. You know, Team Fortress, the game where it's absolutely vital to know what kind of class everyone is. Not Counter-Strike, where it makes literally no difference, no. Great idea, Valve. Totally doesn't make the game unplayable. Ironically, the title and class select screen still show the actual human models, further hammering down the point of how stupid this all really is. Oh, and ships are turned into springs and gears, something that was carried over into TF2 later. And the blood is peace still, which is just so lazy. I mean, couldn't they have at least turned it black and call it oil? At least the voice lines are great because they're all done by German Barney's actor, Jan Reinhardt. Yes, I finally know who it is. Thanks again, DanTube HDS. Sanitäter! Hey, hello! Ich brauche ärztliche Hilfe! There's even two lines for birthdays and Christmas, where it just reminds me so much of the Pimmelmann song. Alles Gute zum Geburtstag. Fröhliche Weihnachten. Kind of freaked me out, honestly. Speaking of freaking out, let's now divert attention to everyone's favorite Counter-Strike game. Released just one year after the first Counter-Strike, it shares a lot of the same assets and that extends to the censorship. So, much like in the Steam version, there is no blood and gore to be found whatsoever. Where it does differ, however, is in the voice acting. The player radio remained the same, but since the hostages received a ton of new lines, they simply… didn't dub any of them. I could understand if they were being lazy or cheap and didn't want to bother, but they did actually translate all of the new bot-related voice lines. And there's way more of them. You've already heard these in the intro, but here's a more in-depth look. While the 1.6 voices were pretty competently made, this time they really just sound like the developers themselves recorded them. The line delivery is often incredibly stilted and littered with all pronunciations. Gesehen? So macht man das. Sieht sie jemand? Greifen den Feind jetzt an? Was zum Teufel? Mm, sicher. Ich liebe Gefahr. Das denke ich nicht. At best, they're kind of awkward, but acceptable, I suppose. Gib mir Deckung. Keine Sorge, er wird's schon schaffen. Gegner erledigt. Werde die Bombe bei B liegen. Hab den Heckenschützen erledigt. Ich bewache die Geiseln. Geiseln gesichert. Sie können sie jetzt rausholen. Ich werde die Bombe nicht aus den Augen lassen. Ich werde ein Auge auf den Rettungsbereich werfen. And when the actor leans more into that cheesiness, it kinda pays off. Raus hier, das ist mein Haus. Ah, bist du verrückt? Wow, yeah! Das macht mir so schnell keiner nach. Sonst noch jemand? Though, those pain sounds... Ah, ah, ah. 
What makes them a bit worse is that they're randomly pitch shifted in game, which I guess was the case in the original too, but also turns them into chipmunks at times. I suppose if you look at them not through a critical lens, but just as something to make your gaming sessions even more fun, they're absolutely acceptable. But some of the extra translations are a bit odd. Like how the alright let's do this line was turned into that's how it's done. Alles klar, so wird's gemacht. Same meaning, just wrong context. I do find it a bit funny how come out wherever you are was basically called out for being childish in the dub. Komm raus, wir sind hier nicht im Kindergarten. And there's even a cute little A-Team reference. Ich liebe es, wenn ein Plan funktioniert. Worth mentioning is that they bothered giving the bots a level of professionalism, using the formal form of you when addressing the superior. Mostly. Nicht schlecht, man. However, while the 1.6 voices fit the CTs more than the Ts, here they work for neither of them. They just sound too much like some students recording a super serious movie for their film class. It's kind of interesting since it's a sort of inverse of what happened in the previous game. Where the original was amateurish and the dub professional, here it's the other way around. But again, like in the first title, it all adds to the charm and makes these voices stand out. But Condition Zero doesn't just have a multiplayer, right? If I recall correctly, there was also a single player mode. Yes, the deleted scenes of Condition Zero, something I'm sure not a lot of people have ever touched, but absolutely should. The same censorship from the multiplayer is carried over here, so there's not a single drop of blood to be found. Not even the peace splats on surfaces. Well, except for when you step on cockroaches, so we're at least one step above German Half-Life. Huh, maybe everyone was just bugs all this time. Unfortunately, this makes it still incredibly difficult to tell when enemies are hit or not, which often resulted in me wasting a lot of ammo. And that's twice as bad considering how scarce it is here. At least in multiplayer, either you or the enemy bite the dust quickly. But in single player, enemies are often way tankier, especially bosses. So much like in Half-Life, I often stood there wondering if I was even doing anything at all. Similarly, corpses also vanish after some time, and gypped enemies just fade out of existence. This resulted in some pretty comedic moments when the corpse retained their pose while suspended in midair. Less fun was me wasting even more ammo when I didn't know that a dead guy was actually dead. This only applies to corpses created by the player, since characters killed by enemies or teammates usually stick around. This is incredibly bugged however, like how this kamikaze refused to vanish, I assume because it was he who killed himself, not me. And in certain stages, all dead bodies remained, even once I created myself. Scripted corpses, however, are all left intact, even still lying around in pools of their own blood. I guess the logic is that all of those people were killed by the evil bad guys, so it's okay to show how evil a bad guy ye they are. Whereas the player is always good and never causes any harm. Death animations also stayed untouched, especially scripted ones. I'm really glad that enemies don't just sit down and shake their head at you like they do in other Valve titles. But this also includes a particularly gruesome scene of a sniper falling onto a spike gate, even with a large blood pool at the bottom. Strange they left it in the game, considering this one was clearly caused by the player. Or maybe the guy decided to go out in style. The voice acting is where it gets really interesting, however. At first, I was just kinda curious if they even dubbed it at all. But once I got into the training room, I got hit straight in the face with a brick, when the first thing I hear was Gertrude Toma of Half-Life 2 fame talking in the most comically bad American accent. Bitte warten Sie. Ich prüfe Ihre Identität. And as I kept going, I heard the voices of other Half-Life 2 cast members, like Silvio D'Alessandro, Eletta Lawson slash Lohmeyer, Stefan Grotger, and even Wolf Kala. Tut mir leid, ich bin momentan beschäftigt. Ich würde mich ja gerne unterhalten. Es ist im Augenblick aber ungünstig. Hold me here raus. And all that within the first five minutes of playing. Turns out that about half the actors of HL2's German dub worked on this one too. Actually, if anything, this is where they appeared first, over half a year earlier. It's hard for me to tell who voices whom since, and sing it with me, Valve loves to not credit their actors. So I might be wrong about a couple of these. Just let me know in the comments if you know more. I think that Stefan Grotka, who voiced the Vortigons in Half-Life 2 and Solid Snake in Metal Gear Solid, portrays most of the scientists and does a pretty good job at it. Schleichen Sie mit Hilfe Ihrer Glasfaserkamera an der Wache vorbei. Keine Angst. Wenn man sie entdeckt, können Sie es noch einmal versuchen. But one of his other performances really just sounds like a slightly Russian Vort, even keeping the same weird intonations. Sie haben nur 15 Minuten Zeit. 
einschalten, bevor sich das Schiff mit voller Wucht in die Stadt bohrt. Wolf Kala, aka Dr. Breen und Revolver Ocelot, does a lot of different roles. Many of which unfortunately don't fit because he sounds so much older than the characters he's playing. Okay, ich warte hier. And especially in the first few missions, he comes across as quite robotic. Here is Red Tail 5. Wir sind getroffen und stürzen ab. Red Tail 5, stürzt ab. It's really odd because he has probably among the most acting experience out of everyone else. And that shows most of the time, since he sounds overall pretty good, if not a bit stilted in there. Da sie unser einziger Agent am Boden sind, müssen sie das Lager infiltrieren und die deutschen Geiseln orten. I also love how hammy his performance is now and again, reminding me of the Goddess of Chaos that was the female citizen in Half-Life 2. Cool bleiben. Cool bleiben. Alles ruhig. Der Typ ist wieder gelaufen. Ende. Gertrude Thoma is one of those actresses who doesn't really change that much from game to game, sounding the same as Naomi Hunter as she does as Judith Mossman. Well, until her role as Gladys, of course. But here, she's not much different, so just fine. Ich habe solche Angst. Werden Sie mich beschützen? So viel Mut muss belohnt werden. Hello and welcome in my Counter-Strike. Who also doesn't sound much different is Erich Redman or Redman, who was Barney in Half-Life 2. He's still kind of weird here, but surprisingly, doesn't stick out negatively in any way. Likely because everyone else is just as weird. Die Zeit läuft uns davon. Entschärfe die Bombe. He's also a lot better when he's not putting on a fake accent. Wir haben die Verbindung mit dem größten Teil des Bodenteams verloren. There are also some voices I couldn't quite pin down. Like the soldiers in the tutorial, who might be voiced by Grotka too, or Fernando Tiberini, who also did G-Man. Either way, they're pretty good, even a bit funny. Willkommen auf dem Schießstand. Boom! Gut gemacht! Granate! Ich kann nicht sehen! Zu viel Nebel! Another one is the female hostages, right before they switch to being voiced by Toma. Gott sei Dank, sie sind hier! Now, at this point, you would definitely notice how everyone speaks in these god-awful accents. The most prominent out of them is the American one. Danke. Wenn wir das nächste Mal einen trinken gehen, zahle ich. Geh hinten um rum und mach das Tor auf. Wir versuchen diese Türen zu öffnen. There's also a British variant, which sounds almost identical. I actually had to look up if these characters were meant to be British or not. Ah, endlich sind sie da. Das Briefing findet im hinteren Raum statt. Viel Glück. Reichen Sie dem feindlichen Hubschrauber aus. Bleib mir, irgendwann müssen Sie doch auch mal weiter. Bollocks. The only one that isn't terrible is the Russian or Eastern European one. Das ist komisch. Die Anlage läuft mit Notstrom. Die Rakete startet in 5 Minuten. Raus hier, Genosse. Das Funksignal dringt nicht durch die Schutztüren hindurch. At least most of the time. Ich habe den Eindringling. Hierher. The worst one, however, has to be the totally not racist Japanese accent. Herr Yoshida betritt den Hof. Alle ist aufgepasst. Es kommen immer mehr Feinde zu Herr Yoshidas Stellung. Dieser Kriegsflug ist ja sowas von unmodisch. Es gibt ja so viele Bände von der Reihe. Ich kann mich gar nicht entscheiden. <laughs> Though, even that one seems to randomly turn into a Russian one. Wir sollen die Gegend sichern, bis weitere Befehle eingehen. Now, the voice acting may sound like it's all over the place, and while that is true, I don't mind it. It's all so cheesy, which kind of fits the tone of the game, even the goofy accents. Well, except the Japanese one, I guess. Warum gehst du mir noch auf die Nerven? These actors weren't as great in Half-Life 2, because that game takes itself far more seriously and was even downright depressing at times. But Condition Zero is far from serious, which it really doesn't even attempt to hide. So everything has a bit of a bootleg B-movie vibe, which is just fantastic. There are a couple of problems though, like how the voices swap back and forth randomly. Okay, we müssen also nicht auf zehn Spitzen einkommen. Auf, da im Fenster ist eine Zielanrichtung mit Rakete. Interestingly, they did bother to give these characters the same accent, even if the actual voice is completely different. Another one is that certain voice lines aren't dubbed. This makes sense for ones you don't really need to understand, like the random enemy banter. Though, it's still a bit jarring when they switch back to German. In certain cases, though, they didn't even translate English sentences that the player was meant to understand in the original. I have a surprise for you. You won't like it. 
I'm assuming they just kind of forgot. This is not a huge deal since there are subtitles. Except for the final boss whose Irish accent already makes him way harder to understand for a lot of Germans I'd assume. I've already armed the detonator. Even worse, his last lines do get translated for some reason. With such an unfitting voice that I didn't even realize it was meant to be the same guy at first. Do plans to have Obviously, the lines that already were German originally stayed the way they were. But here, they also left the subtitles in, which is at best unnecessary... Haltet sie auf! And at worst confusing, because they say something entirely different. Hört mit dem Klopfen auf! Ihr wollt wohl, dass ich reinkomme! Also, I'm not sure how I feel about a German telling someone to turn up the gas. Dreh das Gas auf! Because... you know... Gas ovens aren't really common here. But I honestly don't mind any of these. They break immersion like it's eggs for breakfast, but never fail to make me chuckle. What's less acceptable is how often characters get cut off while speaking or talk over each other. If you've watched this series for a while, you should be no stranger to that. But here it happens a lot. A lot lot. Way more than in any other game I've taken a look at so far. Granted, the objective of the game is usually just to shoot and scoot, so you don't really need context for that. But ironically, the one place where it is important, namely the tutorial, is where it happens the most. Als nächsten Ausrüstungsgegenstand sehen wir uns genau wie die Lötlampe. Lässt sich die funkgesteuerte Bombe. Nur nehmen Sie die Bomben und legen Sie eine davon auf der Aus. Danach gehen Sie in Deckung und drücken die Feuertaste, um die Bombe zu zünden. And to make matters worse, this even ruins certain jokes. Like that wonderful throwing icicles one. Meine Hände sind schon fast erfroren. Hoffentlich versucht hier niemand einzubrechen. Ich glaube nicht, dass ich mit diesen Fingern den Abzug bedienen könnte. Wir könnten ja auch Eiszapfen auf die anderen <laughs> That's unacceptable! But all in all, Condition Zero deleted scenes isn't unplayable. The censorship might get in the way of gameplay sometimes, but I think it has way bigger issues than not knowing if you're dealing damage. Like how it loves putting enemies in places where they're guaranteed to hit you before you can even see them. The voice acting makes it all worth it though. It's just so outlandish and ridiculous, landing this one straight in the so bad it's good category of German ports. Only problem I have is that I'd really like to actually hear the characters' voices instead of them being cut off right as they're talking. Counter-Strike Source, the best one in the series, and no, do not add me for that. There are many things I'd like to say about this game, but unfortunately, none of them relate to this video's topic. So instead, let's just take a look at the voice acting once more. The player radio is the same as the 1.6 one, which is to be expected and still fits nicely. However, the hostages still speak English. I could understand if that's because they reused the same lines as from Condition Zero, since those were a lot. But the weird thing is that they have just slightly more lines than in 1.6. You could definitely dub these without issue. But more confusingly, none of the bots are in German either, which makes absolutely no sense because these are the same lines as from Condition Zero. Feind gesichtet. One guy left. And I highly doubt they didn't use them because they were too amateurish, since that was evidently not a problem for Half-Life 2. But trying to make sense of Elf's logic when it comes to their dubs is a fruitless effort, so let's just look at the censorship. Now, my game is fully uncensored, even when setting it to German. I saw some people online saying that the blood used to be removed at some point, and killed enemies would even lie on the floor with their hands behind their heads, like the hostages from 1.6. But I could only find a single video online that even demonstrated this. The oldest footage I saw on YouTube of Germans playing the game was from 2011 and did have blood and go in it. In certain forums, people also claimed the game was never censored, or only got censored later on with a patch, but that supposedly went away in the end. Apparently, it was all removed in 2018 anyway, which explains why I can play the uncut version. Though, I guess the censorship was already easy to circumvent before, so it's just kind of... eh. And that's basically the summary of this whole port. It's... eh. The inconsistency when it comes to the voice lines is pretty awful once more, since while I can understand of wanting to dub the hostages again, the German lines for the bots were freely available already. Or maybe not even Valve remembers Condition Zero. But that concludes my favorite game in the series. Now there's just one last title left. Counter-Strike Global Offensive.
let's start with the voice acting one last time. Because there is none. Which is not surprising considering Valve had stopped dubbing the game since Portal 2, which came out a year earlier. I suppose the reason for it was that they added unique lines for all playable factions, so they couldn't just reuse the 1.6 lines once more. And translating them all across multiple languages was probably too much effort. Especially considering that the target audience of the game should be able to understand at least the most basic of English. It's also possible that since the game is a live service like Dota, they'd always plan to eventually add more voice lines later on, which would all need to get dubbed as well. And they might not have considered that worth the effort, which is why TF2 also never received any more dubbed lines either. Likewise, the blood and gore is the same as in the original version. Though, even here they had initially planned to add that quote-unquote death animation from Counter-Strike Source where players lie down on the floor instead, but that never made it into the final game. Hilariously, this also applies to fall damage and getting burned alive, making it seem more like the whole game is just make-believe between a couple of kids. Also, while it makes sense that the terrorists would be the ones surrendering to the CTs, the other way around it's a bit less logical. I mean, the terrorists are already blowing up nuclear material, so why would they take hostages that are going to die anyway? At least it's a million times better than humans in Half-Life 1 sitting down and shaking their heads when killed, like they're so disappointed in that ceiling turret that just shot at them. Honestly, I always thought that this animation was better than having ragdolls, since those might get caught on level scenery and appear like a player that's still alive crouching or standing there, while this animation makes it very clear that they're out of the fight. I wonder, if they had added this, would competitive players have used it just to get a slight advantage over others? In the end, it was never fully implemented because laws had already loosened up by then. And no, no matter what anyone says, you can't just re-enable it with console commands. Trust me, I tried. But hey, why stop on such a disappointing note? I know this series is called The Quirks of German X, but while we're at it, why not take a look at the Chinese version of CSGO? If you thought the English title was a mouthful, the full title of this one is Counter-Strike Global Offensive Perfect World Edition. And I can only assume it's called Perfect World because they removed just about anything that could be considered controversial in China. So all references to other cultures and religions are removed, like Arabic references in Dust and Dust 2, and even the flag of Italy in... Italy. Italians, the most controversial people of all. Political references like the hammer and sickle symbol in Cash and Train were also taken out, as well as the entirety of Monastery. Huh, I wonder why. Where's it take place again? Ooh! Blood and gore weren't taken out, but just turned grey, and even the achievement icons have low violence variants. Now, this does sound remarkably similar to the German versions of Counter-Strike, but unlike German CSGO, this version actually has Chinese voice acting for all characters. I guess they were fine with doing it here, considering it's just one other region instead of several. You've probably also heard that a lot of weapon skins and stickers were censored for Chinese players. This means that anything related to skeletons, skulls, and even blood was replaced with similar designs, since those are banned over there. Now, that's half right. In actuality, this isn't even government-imposed censorship. China doesn't have a ban on these concepts, it's just that Chinese laws are a bit loosely defined in these areas. So something like skeletons might be considered as, quote, promoting superstition. As a result, developers usually act more cautiously and remove anything that could be considered problematic themselves, hoping their media has an easier time getting accepted for the Chinese market. So they're not forced to do this, and there has been plenty of media with skeletons in them that has been into China. It's just more logical for them to do it themselves than getting rejected and being forced to do so. As a result, skin makers for CSGO have to replace all those designs just for China. So skulls get turned into gas masks, demons and ghosts, and blood might get turned into toxic sludge. Here's a few examples of that by the artist Dani Dem. Actually, how does that affect those skin makers directly? How do they feel about this? In order to answer that question, I decided to interview said artist about exactly that. If you don't know him, Dani Dem is a professional artist and video game dev who has made skins and stickers for CSGO since 2015, but had already made cosmetics for Dota since 2012. For CSGO, 3 skins and 40 of his stickers got accepted, 4 of which required a low violence variant. He said the first time he had to censor his own work, Valve reached out to him when two of his stickers had skulls on them. These days, he already submits alternate versions without being asked to do so. He says that if he has an idea for a certain design, then being forced to come up with a substitute might clash with that original concept, like a gas mask being forced into a context where a skull would fit better. He thinks that if he has a certain design in mind, it's supposed to look that way and not any other way. Though, sometimes he does like the alternative, such as the demon faces on his Love Devil sticker. I have to admit, I think they fit the theme better too. But while he agrees that it does require more creativity from artists to find workarounds, he doesn't think there's any benefit to it, aside from personal taste maybe. 
However, while Danny Dem says he'd prefer the censorship to not exist because it creates additional work, he's still willing to go the extra mile and will continue implementing skulls, skeletons, and blood into his skins. Since, in his own words, while I feel it's important to respect other cultures, I think it's just as important to respect and enjoy our own. I love skulls, skeletons, etc., and we shouldn't give them up just because they're seen as a negative in certain parts of the world. So to summarize, this self-imposed censorship isn't the best for skin makers since it forces them to work even more, and it might even ruin their initial visions for design. At least in Danny Dem's case, it doesn't seem to encourage him to forego these ideas in the first place, even if it means finding a workaround later. I find that admirable. Personally, while I don't think having to come up with alternatives is inherently bad, since it can lead to more creative concepts than just having skeletons and blood everywhere, there's only so much you can really do. If your skin incorporates a skull, for instance, you can't just replace it with any object while keeping the mood and aesthetic the same, which often leads to people using the same substitutes like gas masks or ghosts. Your canvas is pretty limited, and you can't just replace everything as easily as Valve replaced the Marines in Half-Life with robots. Plus, imagine you live in China and saw a cool new skin. But when you bought it, it looked nothing like what you fell in love with. Considering how much skins are a form of self-expression, this is to me far worse than not having blood and gore. I wish these rules didn't exist either, but it's still an interesting window into almost an alternate universe, and it can be fun to look at all these different designs and see what people came up with. Still, it's pretty ridiculous that skeletons get censored on guns that are regularly being used to kill other people. Anyway, before we wrap things up, here's a couple topics that I'm definitely never going to be talking about otherwise. For instance, I find it cool how often Counter-Strike includes maps taking place all over the world. And of course, my favorites are the German maps, because I love it when I play a game and can say, hey, this looks like where I live. Like Overpass, which, yep, looks pretty much like Berlin, or even any other major German city. Even with a construction that never seems to end, or the half-hearted excuse for a playground. Though, not nearly enough prohibition size for that. Another one is Nuke, which sadly got turned into an American power plant later on. Though that kind of fits, since they recently shut down the last remaining nuclear power plants in Germany. A change truly ahead of its time. Actually, while recording, I found this site that states the plant is already decommissioned and is supposed to be demolished until 2010. I never knew that and I guess it does explain why eventually they stopped using it because it was gone. Still glad it was featured in the very first CSGO trailer though, together with the GSG 9. In general, the German units are all over promotion art for the game, which I find very neat. After all, it's called Global Offensive, so it's great they're not just showing Middle Eastern terrorists and American FBI agents. But what's my final verdict on all these versions? Let's find out. I'll be honest, everything could have been a lot worse, especially in regards to the censorship. We can be lucky that only blood and gore were removed, because they could have easily added those silly death animations since the beginning. While this was the case for a couple versions of Counter-Strike, it was never done consistently enough. Even worse would have been if they had banned these games here outright, and I'm honestly surprised they didn't. When Counter-Strike 1.6 came out, there were a lot of scandals in Germany around so-called Killerspiele, i.e. killer games. And CS was right in the center of attention, being seen as one of the worst. You know, blame the games instead of the parents for allowing their kids to play them. This was made worse by a couple school shootings at the time, where these so-called killer games were seen as instigators. In fact, some politicians even demanded players get arrested for playing them. Everyone knew Counter-Strike, even people that never played a single video game in their life, because it was THE killer game. So it's astounding it was even available at all here, especially since games like Manhunt are still banned and even Wolfenstein 3D could only be purchased legally until just recently. And considering Counter-Strike was available but shootings weren't nearly as common as in other regions, I guess games weren't the problem in the first place. As for the future of Counter-Strike, I think it's looking bright, at least if you're a fan of blood and gore. There were talks of making CS more advertiser-friendly by removing references to terrorism, but they'll seem to have decided against that. In fact, they're apparently doubling down on blood and gore by making it even more visceral to shoot people in Counter-Strike 2. It's almost an integral part of the gameplay now, since blood dries on walls over time to not obscure players standing in front of it. Thanks to Thwinklix Philip for the footage. It's interesting how they went from blood as something that merely existed and could just be turned off, to a feature that they're now focusing on making look as flashy and as realistic as possible. So they really went from Counter-Strike for kids to Counter-Strike Extreme Gore Edition. And hey, maybe even the Chinese version of the game will eventually be uncensored too. But what do you think? Which parts of these games did you find the most interesting? And did I maybe miss anything? Let me know down below. 
As for me, there's just one last Valve series to finish up and that's Left 4 Dead. So stay tuned for that. Kind of fitting since those games seem to take place in the Counter-Strike universe. And if you've enjoyed this type of video, maybe take a look at the others. The link for the playlist is down below and here on screen. You can also support me by leaving a like, a comment or donating to my Patreon. Anything is appreciated. A big thanks also to Ben Drew for helping me with recording footage, to Danny Dem for the interview, and to 3 Clicks Philip for getting me in contact with him and helping me with the video in general. But for now, thank you very much for watching, have a wonderful day, and goodbye.